and that in some way or other that choice can make my story, which is a very real story, make it maybe a bit better or more comfortable. And of course the other thing about this is that directly there's a sense of someone being here, there's a sense of separation from everything else. So I'm in here and the trees are happening out there and the people are happening out there, they're separate to me. Everything is separate from this. I'm, I'm in here and there are lots of things happening out there that I experience. And that sense of, satisf that sense of um, separation brings a feeling of uh, something missing, a sort of dissatis dissatisfaction. It's not all that apparent to a lot of people, but the more open, uh, more sensitive that that person is, the more they feel strongly that there's something missing in their lives. They feel as though living in the, as, as though they are separate from everything else, like the trees and the sky and other people, is not satisfying. So they look for something deeper, they look for a meaning for their feeling of unfulfillment. And that's what we call seeking, that's when seeking seems to happen, seems to bring about a, a, a need to find something deeper, to find a satisfaction that doesn't seem to be there, looking for fulfillment. <coughs> so people look for fulfillment in many ways, and there are many offers of fulfillment. <laughs> Like there's Christianity, Buddhism, therapy, and, and also there are teachers of enlightenment, and so on. And all these things sound as though they might give the seeker the answer they're looking for. The answer to something that seems to be missing, as though they've lost something. And because they've grown up believing that they have to do it, I have to do my life, I have to take action to make my life work, then they also believe that they have to do something to find fulfilment. And what's behind that is actually quite a deep feeling of not being good enough. In a sense, that initial rejection from the whole back into, the, or into this feeling of being a, a separate energy in here brings a feeling of, of, of somehow not being good enough, somehow needing to do something. So Christianity, Buddhism, therapy, <coughs> teachers of enlightenment, teachers of enlightenment are offering to help that person change or become somehow <coughs> better. Be still, be quiet, be good, be loving, be this, be that. Change from where you are into what you could be and then you will have the fulfillment you're looking for. So what we're talking about here, what's being suggested here, is that the whole construct of there being a contracted sense of individuality in here, and the growing up of that individuality, and the taking on of the sense that there is a story, and that I'm a real person, and I can make real choice to really change my life and make my life better, all of that <coughs> is somehow illusory. The whole sense of individuality is like a dreamt energy. It's energy in that form. Right at the beginning, I was saying all there is is energy, and it's completely free, and it can be anything. And it can also be a contracted sense of individuality. There's nothing wrong with that sense of individuality. And there's nothing wrong with seeking to find fulfillment. It's simply oneness appearing to be apart from itself and looking back, searching around for itself again. So there's nothing right or wrong about being a me or an I or a self. That's what <coughs> seems to happen. And there's nothing wrong with trying to put that right. But what's being suggested here is that the attempt to make the individual feel fulfilled is utterly futile because the whole energy of separation only arises in a dualistic reality. So in another way what we're sharing together here is the possibility that there are two realities. One is the separate reality, which is experienced by most people and seems to be normal. And the other is a natural reality which can't be 
taught or talked about because it's it's beyond knowing it's beyond the, the individual sense of knowledge or experience and, and what seems to happen and, and what's apparently happen is that when the individual hears this this message when the, when the individual is open to the possibility that individuality separation is illusory it seems to fall apart it seems to unravel so we can share together and talk about how it, it is to be an individual, the way in which it takes form. We can also share together in words the way in which people, the individual tries to find some sort of fulfillment or some answer to the feeling of loss. We can talk about that in words. And something can be exposed. There can be a letting go of the fixed idea that I'm really a person in here and I have to make an effort to find fulfillment. That can begin to unravel. But in another way, what's happening here is beyond words. What's happening here is energetic. The seeker would come here to try and get something, because the seeker, the individual, always wants to gather in something, wants to know more for itself so that it can feel happier. So the individual seeker would come here in order to get something. But it's possible that there will be a sudden recognition or realisation that there's nothing to get. It's possible. Because actually there is nothing on offer here at all. These meetings don't have anything to give to the individual <coughs> because this communication comes out of the recognition that the individual is an illusion. And therefore there's no sense that there will be anything that the individual that, you, that could be given to the individual because of that dream-like quality that the individual lives in. So the difference between this sort of meeting and a chichi is that there's absolutely nothing on offer <laughs> at all. There's nothing for sale. And in some strange way, that energy meets the energy of need and want, and something else can then take its place. Some sense of wanting something for the self can fall away and a whole sense of boundlessness can arise in that space. So, Tony, are you saying there's only a material ground? That's Sorry? Sort of are you saying there's only a this physical material ground? There's no such thing as a spiritual ground. As far as I'm concerned, the word spiritual doesn't get off the ground. This is not a spiritual message. It's got nothing to do with what I see as spiritual, which is something to do with goodness <coughs> and there being uh, something else that can, that can be aspired to. There's nothing to aspire to, and this message is not about goodness. It's about, it exposes uh, that the dreams and hopes of the individual seeker are completely illusory. And, 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 and what can arise is often uh, a feeling of helplessness about the situation of being in the And then something else can take its place. Thank you. Is there anything we can do to... There isn't anyone. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, said, you, said, you said... I'm going to catch you out. So you said if we come to these meetings... Well, we don't come to these meetings. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be clever. Okay, okay, right. There isn't anybody that came here to okay, get right. through choice. It just happened. I mean, you might have heard how wonderful I am. That's perfectly true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start again. I'll start again. So, so, so you said at these, at these meetings, something starts to unravel. So. It can, apparently. Yeah. And you said the illusion of separation starts to unravel at these meetings. Can apparently. Yeah. Now, is there any other situation where the unraveling can happen? Oh, yes. Besides yes. yes. coming to these meetings? Yes, there's a bus stop just outside. Don't make any difference. Okay. You don't have to be here. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying there's no environments which are more con conducive than other environments? No, but the only difference is that when people come here with the intention of getting something, yeah. and then there's begins to really, there's a realisation that arises that apparently they're not going to get it. <laughs> then, then there can be a, a realization. There must be something that's beyond me getting anything mm -hmm. that can arise, and then the whole sense of me <coughs> having to seek and having to get yeah. something can run over. Okay. I mean, if you at the bus stop, that's not so likely to happen. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the other thing that has absolutely got nothing to do with being here or anywhere is that somewhere energetically. The whole um, impetus of the contracted sense of having to get something more, trying to draw everything into the me, can can unravel, uh -huh. and then there's and then there's a feeling of where do I go now? What do I, there isn't anything here. Where, where? somehow that openness yeah. in that openness, boundlessness. <coughs> yeah, everything is in appearance, as I said at the beginning. Uh, there is an apparent unravel, there's an apparent liberation, but, the, the, but none of those things are actually real. The great dilemma for, for the seeker is that they live in what they think is a real world, and they think their experiences are real, whereas actually they are both real and unreal. Everything is only real and unreal. It's an appearance of <coughs> We're talking about a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, when you start talking about mystery at the beginning, I noticed I started to feel really sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, does it matter? Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't matter. And of course, and don't forget the other thing is that the seeker will constantly reject this message. Yes. Right at this moment, this message is being rejected. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be because the seeker wants to survive. Yeah. So the seeker survives by going on seeking. <coughs> Idea. Well, time, like everything else, is an appearance. So it's not. There isn't such a thing as a real time. There isn't such a thing as anything that's actually only real. Everything that arises is an appearance. So everything in this room, just to keep it simple, is is both real and unreal. It is, and it is not, because it's nothing appearing. This is nothing appearing. It's not nothing down in a, in a, or up in a big pink cloud and then and then kind of down being this. This is nothing appearing. It's a total mystery. This is emptiness appearing as fullness. This is fullness. Whee! <laughs> you know, energy appearing to be alive, but it is only an appearance. And, it, and that appearance has absolutely no meaning or purpose of any kind. It just is what it is. Flowers don't need a purpose to be there. Nothing here needs a purpose. It just is what it is. It's only me, the self, who wants to discover purpose and meaning. 
to give its life purpose and meaning. It doesn't have any. And what brings you here? No, nothing. I didn't come up here. <laughs> <laughs> There isn't anyone in this room. There isn't any individual. <laughs> but you could presume that there's an idea or a dream or a sense or a dream that there is someone sitting here. And there's some. And usually, when there's a sense of someone sitting here, they then think there's someone standing here talking. <laughs> you know, I, I'm an individual, so he must be an individual. Um, actually, there isn't anyone here. All there is is what's happening. So as, you, as you're not here, you're not anywhere? No, I'm not anywhere. I, I know I'm you. There isn't an I. There is only what is. So when the illusion of there being someone called Tony Parsons collapsed, then all that was left was life happening to no one, absolutely no one. There wasn't anyone that was aware of life. There wasn't anyone that, that knows there's one. There's, there's no one. There's no centre that knows anything. There's just like that's what I call the natural reality and it's impossible to describe it. So if you ask me what it's like to be everything, I couldn't tell you. So there is no beginning and no there's no beginning and no middle and no end. There is only what is. <laughs> This instant, it is just what is, and is not. So there's the, there is not any difference at all between uh, me when I'm awake and when I'm sleeping. No, at all, no. And there's nothing wrong with me. It is what is. Me seeking separation are what is, just as much as the chair or wall or the sky is what is. There's only what is. So what I see, what I see while I'm sleeping is an illusion as it is when I, as what I see. When All the time there's a sense of me there, that the me experiences everything in an illusory way. <coughs> it lives in an illusory reality, that the wall is separate. I keep over there, I'm here, and I'm separate from the wall. When there's no one, there's just one. the illusion so persistent? Um, actually, uh, this is the other awful part of this message. This isn't persistent because it's not really happening. <laughs> it's only an illusion. But it does seem that, the, that, that many, many apparent people are fascinated by the illusion of me because they're fascinated by the idea in the end, although they wouldn't necessarily admit it, that me is going to find the answer to its dilemma. So they are fascinated by the whole energy of me being separate and looking for something that's beyond them. It doesn't matter, because even though it seems as though it's a, a very um, powerful thing that's ongoing, actually it's not happening at all. We're talking about mystery here. There isn't anything happening. This is nothing apparent. It's very, you know, the me, me thinks it is significant and its life is significant. And even if it is separate, it thinks the undoing of that separation and final enlightenment is also significant. None of it is at all. Because when that collapses, when the me collapses, suddenly it's realised there never was a me and there never was a liberation. And then that doesn't need to be liberation or enlightenment. Everything is what it is. For the seeker, what's on offer, well, there isn't anything on offer here, but for the seeker, liberation is actually quite disappointing. Because the, the seeker wants to be special. The seeker wants to, you know, his life of seeking and coming and discovery and so on. And people will say, I hear you're enlightened now. And you're well, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, you know, and all that sort of stuff goes on. 
uh, the, the seeker wants to be special. This, when the seeker collapses, what's left is totally ordinary and absolutely obvious. You're sitting on it right now. <laughs> Could the um, seeking self disappear without knowing? Well, yes, it does come and go. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a very uh, movable thing. It's, it's there sometimes and not others. So at times, there are times when there is no sense of a me. But there isn't necessarily a, a, any recognition or dropping away of the possibility of the me coming back. The me comes and goes, comes and goes. <coughs> So that when the me is not there, there isn't any seeking. Yeah. And then when the me comes back, then need. Me is need. Me is in, 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 a, in a place which is separate. So it's constantly, all the time, it's there, that energy. You don't forget it's only energy. There is no me. There's no I. But all the time it's there. There's a need to find wholeness. And where the need comes from? Sorry? Where, where does this need come from? The need comes from the feeling of being separate. I'm <coughs> separate from the world and I want to be at one with it. <coughs> all, all religions and seeking and teaching is about that. But unfortunately it comes from the from a from a mis misconception that there is that the me or the I can actually take out the time on. There's no need to find homes because all of this is home. It was never lost. and speak in a non-dual way. <laughs> in the normal world, the language that people use as they grow up is the language they learn through the sense of being dualistic. The language is dualistic, but changing language is not nothing to do with it. 
say the political language is a problem, language can never solve the problem. Yeah. It, it, well, the problem can't be solved. No, right. But, but the reason for that is that there isn't a problem. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Gain. Uh, and he's always trying to gain, 
and his fight with losing. So, and so that, that arises jealousy or envy. Or envy. So what you see in the world today is a typical example of how those two opposites, gain and loss, are happening. Winning and losing are happening more and more and more. There's a build-up of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Greed. Greed is also very much. Greed is very connected with fear, of course. Fear of loss. So if I get more, I, I won't lose. Yeah. So once that, so after liberation, that, that those sort of emotions kind of disappear. Yeah, just disappear this way, because there isn't anybody to feed with anymore. Or all, all the time there's a me or an I, then what arises in the brain is fed by me and me feeds the brain. They they interconnect, they com they they converse with each other constantly, day and night. You know, when you wake up in the morning the brain goes la, 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 la. and the me builds up its anxiety about the world it's living in. When the me's no longer there, the, the, the brain has no one to talk to anymore, so it gets bored stiff. <laughs> with those ideas, and they just disintegrate. Yeah. There's no invitation in that current energetic shift. There's no invitation in that current energetic shift. Uh, you could say, in, in a sense, that everything that's happening in this room is an invitation. So whatever is happening there seems to be happening there, or seems to be an experience like sitting on the floor, sitting on the seat, <coughs> aching, a body aching, feeling warm, hearing <coughs> sounds. Everything that's happening in this room is the beloved speaking, making noise. Everything that arises is the beloved, uh, and and the individual uh, pushes or keeps a wall between what's happening, which is the beloved, and itself by being aware of what's happening. So the individual me is aware of sitting on a seat. I am, I am this person, and I'm sitting on the seat. I know I am. I'm aware of it. But sitting on the seat is the beloved. Is oneness. Is what's happening. Is what is, and is not. But the individual keeps apart from it by thinking that it the individual knows sitting on the seat. I am sitting on the seat. I'm aware. Awareness directly. Um, uh, individuality takes form, the contract form. What arises with it is awareness of the world that seems to be outside. And the, and the child grows up and develops that awareness which keeps that which is one apart. I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is the beloved, everything in this room is speaking to the seeker. I'm here already, I'm here. The seeker can't hear that somewhere, is still living in that dualistic world and thinks that the thing that's happening to them is something that they're having an experience of. I'm experiencing this. I know uh, hearing a sound or 
premium war. When that collapses, there just is war sitting on the sea, sound. There just is that. And there's nothing that's apart from that. There is nothing that's apart. Is there any choice? No, there are no, because there is no one, there is no choice. But there appears to be choice. Again, what arises is a sense of an individual with people in choice who chooses to do that or that. Neuroscientists have, have, have already proven that when an individual chooses to do that, it's actually the brain a few seconds or a second, millisecond before has chosen to do that, and then the individual takes ownership of it. I'm doing this. Yeah. <clears throat> there's this there's this sense of uh, contraction and open being open, uh, allowing and allowing the openness. Or, or isn't any, me can't allow openness, me don't allow openness, because me would then die. So you may have heard of teachings about <coughs> openness or acceptance, but for me can't be open or accept. For me is in constant movement, trying to find something beyond that. Mm -hmm. All teaching is based on the misconception that there is something a seeker that can choose. If um, it's found as energy with no problem. Well, you, there is just energy. Yeah. Energy. Uh, if it's invitation and also the trap nature itself when you drive to you, why the game? Oh, why not? why not? There's no reason for anything. There's no answer to why. Me wants an answer to why. There is no answer. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we're getting back to this <coughs> most in, well, the impossible part of this message, and actually there isn't anything happening anyway, so there's no why. Anymore. Perhaps it's difficult to say something that is not a person who's dying in a very yeah, young age. Yeah, but it wouldn't be appropriate. It wouldn't. Yeah. It's said when it's appropriate. This is appropriate. There's an openness to this. This is a possibility. And then, and then the, quest, the seeker says, so what's, what's this about? And the response doesn't come out of anyone, it just comes out of nothing. Mm. And says, there is nothing. You aren't something, there is only nothing. That's the freedom. There is separation is an illusion, so that's what's happening here. But you wouldn't go necessarily to somebody in a particular state and start speaking in that way, because you're trying to impose something on them they're not asking about. This only responds to a question <coughs> who am I or what is this? But there are people that are very lucky to get to know about this state before they die. Oh yeah, lots and of people. And many of them. Oh, yeah. It's more and more Apparently, this is happening and, and it, it doesn't mean that they've been to a meeting. It's just this suddenly a shift. It seems like it's so unfair. Um, the person yeah. needs to, the seeker needs to die before it realizes, you know, with all the emotions and, and pain of not knowing and trying to get there, that is nothing anyway, and including the fact that it feels like it's been undermined mm. because it is dying before its time could come. For well, there isn't a time for it to die or not to die. There is dying or there isn't dying. And there is no, this isn't anything to do with the idea that the individual has about fairness or unfairness. It's beyond. I know there's like 10 or 15 years this way or that way to die before the 80, the 80 or die in the age of 30. It's not a big but dying is liberation. I know. Yeah. So what, but so why can't you just if you die yourself? when you're thirty, you get liberated before you are. <laughs> the but it's about but the only awful thing about it. At the beginning, because it's quite extreme. But it's like, should we be happy to die before? No, you. Eight but you years. don't know. What, it isn't about you being happy about liberation. The me is not at all happy about the liberation. That's why it rejects it. Because it, uh, liberation, apparent liberation, is the apparent end of me, so me wouldn't be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> if 
it avoids. That's why it goes on seeking, because it wants to find something that will keep it continuing. Well, that's why people who are very sick. Sorry? Before they die, they actually appreciate the fact that, that they're dying because it's for them like releasing from the pain that they're holding on to. Mm. That can be one of the yeah. motives. Yeah. yeah. So is illness like a potentially that leads to death and build up of um, pain that turns into a disease and then. Well, it can be, but the illness is, is just an illness. What I'm saying is that when they. When the function of separation ceases, which is either in the living body or death, then that's apparent liberation. It's only liberation is the end of the illusion of separation. Mm. And that happens when the body ceases to function, because it's the brain that is creating the function of separation, or not, or, or in the living body, which people call liberation, born or death. Or death. It's the death of an apparent illusion called me. Tony, it feels like, um, is, it, is it the brain that, that you know, like when someone sort of starts speaking, your attention is drawn, like, you know, like our attention is constantly moving to different things, and that seems to be the illusion of the self. Hmm. But is that, like, when, when there is no self, is that the, just the brain just responding? Yeah. The brain assimilates what seems to be happening, and then there's mm -hmm. a sort of response. But the actual response is comes out of something beyond that. Uh, yeah, just... Yeah, so the brain is just a computer. Really. Yeah, but somehow that, the fact that we have our attention goes to different things, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it is, you know, moves around, it's very easy to think that that's intentional, oh, and that that's totally. the self. Actually, it's not. It's just. It's, it's just, just what's happening. Yeah. It's just what's happening. Yeah. But invariably, me thinks that it's its own attention or its own awareness. Yeah. yeah. It feels yeah. like a, a, a last remnant. Of well, it's very powerful. I mean, awareness is. Uh, neuroscientists have also established that when that awareness is the function that keeps me or the I or the identity in place. It's a very powerful function. Awareness. Yeah. For the me, when me dies, of course, so does awareness. But even if there's, when there's not, it's like when there's not awareness, when there's not awareness of, there's still the function of. Oh, well, impersonal, it's yeah, impersonal. Yeah, moving around. You know, that doesn't indicate a person. It just, no. It's just the function of. Just what seems to be. Yeah. Why do we choose to be born? You don't choose to be born, no. it, it apparently happens. Mm -hmm. Being born apparently <laughs> happens, and then after a very short time, uh, being, <coughs> becoming an apparent individual it seems to happen. There isn't any why, because there isn't any purpose or meaning to anything. There isn't at all. No, not, like not in any way. Evolving, expanding consciousness. No, not in like no, no, none of that stuff that teachers talk about. Consciousness is, is, is simply another way of knowing. There's nothing special about consciousness. It's the modern word for God. <laughs> and the, the Buddhist, um, to, like consciousness is still form. Mm. It's still something arising. Mm. It's, not, it's not consciousness that things arise in. It's consciousness that something that arises. Yeah, it's like it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's, a yeah. it's a thing. It's He likes things. Just just the the wonder of this that that there can be no centre mm -hmm. and it's just what's happening. But we're so used to interpreting mm -hmm. body, you know, in, individual body, yeah. individual speaking, yeah. indi individual putting attention on things yeah. as evidence of self. Yeah, and and that and the, that all that can be happening mm. without a centre of self. Mm. It's like, yeah, mm. that's, like a that's freedom. There's yeah. freedom or there's being. Uh, did I hear you say when the me dies, so does awareness? Say that again. I think a few minutes ago you said when the me dies, so does awareness. 
<laughs> oh yeah, personal awareness dies with the person. There is a, there is, the brain assimilates what's going on, you could call that a sort of awareness, but it's totally impersonal. The awareness that the me um, lives with is its own personal awareness. <laughs> So, so when you said, um, when somebody put their hand up, of course you, that registered with you. It's resonance. It's yeah. a, when somebody puts their hands up, the brain resonates. Uh, it, it assimilates what's happening. But didn't that take place in awareness? Um, well, no, that's a secondary thing. When the hand goes up, the brain has already assimilated that. But then the me comes in rather slowly after that. When I say rather slowly, it's a millisecond. And then thinks that it is aware of me. The me is like a great big sticky bun. It <laughs> takes the ownership of everything. It's a complete imposter. An irrelevant. Uh, an irrelevant imposter. But it's not wrong, it's just what's happening. I, I thought that once me goes, we're just in a state of open awareness. No, that's what people teach you. Yeah. All they're doing is developing and strengthening something, something that keeps you separate. Okay. They don't mean to do it, they're very sincere about what they do. Yeah. A great big holy cow of awareness is, is, is made up by man, just like God. <coughs> God didn't make man, man made God. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, uh, you said consciousness is like the model equivalent of God. Uh, is there an argument for an entity that is boundless and appears as everything to be in that same idea or realm of ideas? No, there is nothing that needs knowing. Uh, the, the natural state is unknowable, it's unknowing. Consciousness is a form of knowing, which is, which is necessary for the, for the me. The me wants to know and be aware of and try to know the world. When that me collapses, there's nothing to know because everything is what it is. How is it known? <coughs> Sorry? How is it known then? No, it isn't known that everything as it is, is as it is. There is just everything <coughs> as it is. Right. And the energy, is it a, is, is it, I don't know, it's like a solidification of the idea? Or what exactly is the energy? I suppose that's energy is that. everything. Is In my terms, what, what this uses energy as being everything that's knowable, <coughs> or that's, that is and is not. Isn't it a like great panhenic, like, you know, it is everything, it appears as everything. I mean, a lot of gods are that thing. Sorry? A lot of, a lot of gods are that thing. Gods. Everything. Right. The God, as far as this is concerned, God is, a, is something that's made up by the seeker. The seeker, the seeker feels lost, so it needs a guide, so it makes up God as the guide. Not a good one. Isn't yeah. making God up an energy in itself? Oh, yeah, the whole thing of seeking is an energy. The need to make up a god or a guide is also energy taking that form. There's nothing right or that's why there's nothing right or wrong with creating a god. Does energy choose to take a form? Sorry? Does energy choose to take a form instead of another form? No, there's no choice. No, no choice. There's nothing choosing it. Apparently, you choose that form. Or no, form. there is just what happens. There isn't anything choosing it. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of a sort of a, a body, an organism that kind of apparently is born and then dies. But it's, they sometimes say as well that the awareness that you are is unborn and can't be born or die. It's, it's just, it's not in this, this space that we're in now. It's the awareness that... Well, um, kind of, un, I've read unborn awareness. Un, well, I don't know what that is. Well, it's just, a, it's just a description to describe something that you may be other than th what you think take yourself to be a body and a, an organism. But really, you, you, that thing is really, like what you're saying, is illusory. I think yeah. I might have lost my point, but... It's <laughs> <laughs> <I was> gone. <laughs> Sorry about that, thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> Every time I come to these meetings, you get a bit lost. <laughs> so when people have near-death experiences, oh, <laughs> and find themselves floating above their body, yeah, it's or a it's in like space in time. the brain. I don't know whether you know that. The experiences near death, which isn't death, <laughs> experiences are to do with the lack of oxygen in the brain. So people have all sorts of amazing visions, usually connected <coughs> with their dreams or hopes of what heaven or Jesus looks like. And then there's astral projection. They actually go into places they've never been. But yeah, they they do they but, but energy you can do anything. It can go anywhere, and it can pretend to be someone that's died talking to somebody else that's alive. And knowing things about them nobody else could know. All of that's just a game. Mm. The near death experience is not the same as death. When 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 the when the body ceases to function, there is nothing more. Then the whole sense of separation is no longer there. And at that point, there's a sudden realization there never was anybody that was alive that doesn't is has now died, passed over, or gone beyond the sense of individuality. But the difficulty with that is that it's too late to tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about that is that actually, strangely enough, you couldn't tell it, you can't tell anybody else. Because there's nobody for whom the me has collapsed that can tell anybody else what that's like. It can't be described it? because it's the one thing that's unknowable. So the rest of it is more story. Sorry? The rest of it is more story. The rest of it? The, the astral travelling, the oh, it's, a, no, it's, fan, it's a good fancy, <coughs> it's a good game. Yeah. Makes me feel special. But that's, I've heard a story of a woman who died out of cancer. She was uh, having an end stage of cancer. And she died and she had a conversation with her father and her friend who died of cancer as well. And she understood why she had the cancer. And because she understood why, she came back. Oh. And uh, three days later, 70% of her cancer disappeared. Oh. And she had the choice to go forward to death and to come back, to tell to people how to live their life. So therefore, <coughs> the individual is as important <coughs> as nothingness. And I think we have to have a balance because if we forget about ourselves, we are not doing anything positive to ourselves. Oh, right. Like the, it comes from this part, uh, something like <coughs> not loving ourselves would come, forgetting about the uh, the self as well would come, and many other things. Like I think it, there must be a balance since it is already as it is, and the nothingness can perceive things as it is and you can speak and have the intelligence to kind of communicate and make sense out of it, I think we should have some kind of balance in between the individual me and the nothingness from yeah. which it, it, it is appearing. All right. So what you've described is what's happening there. Uh, the sense of that is what's happening there. <laughs> yeah. Mock him 
Well, no, I'll I'll what was that about? I can't remember. Okay, well, I've made my point now. Oh. And, um, and I won't agree with it too long. And I wouldn't usually, but I have this time. And there we go. How's <laughs> <laughs> that? Thank you. Yes. Um, so it seems that the, the, the illusion of separation it collapses in the case of certain apparent individuals or dream characters, but it doesn't collapse in the case of other no, individuals. No, it it seems like that. Yeah. Seems like that. Yeah. So, so why? You're going to write to God. Why is there reason? Why? 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 Because there is no such thing as a separation. There's no reason at all why. Well, no, because there aren't any people. Okay. And it seems to have collapsed in the case of Tony Parsons. Yeah, but there wasn't a Tony Parsons. There was only uh, an imaginary, or uh, there was only a contracted sense of there being Tony Parsons. <laughs> And, um, that it felt for Tony Parsons as though that person was real. Yeah. When that suddenly that whole energy collapsed, it was realised there never was a Tony Parsons, and there isn't anybody else for whom that has to collapse. Okay. That's the point. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to the or the feeling of being a me, then you the, then you see opposing things like it's it's not fair that some people mm, are liberated fair. and others don't. What you're seeing at, from that point of view is a dualistic point of view that there is, there are really people and a liberation really happens. What I'm trying to describe here, which is very difficult, yeah. is that there isn't any one and okay. therefore there is no such thing as liberation. Okay, it's all just a crazy dream. Well, it's a dream that me makes up because me lives in a story, then when he looks for fulfillment and it calls fulfillment, let's say, liberation, and it believes that that its separation is real, which is an illusion, and it also believes that one day it will become liberated, and that will be something that's real that will happen. What I'm going to say is that neither of those things actually happen, because they're not, everything is real and unreal. It's just that there's real separation that's true, and it isn't that there's real liberation that's true. When, when suddenly the whole idea that separation was real collapses, but that doesn't happen to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can an, in, an enlightened person... There's no such thing, thing as an enlightened <laughs> person, of course. Sorry. Or can, apparently, some, some thing that seems to be enlightened a person become embarrassed? <laughs> 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 Can you, if, if there's no sense of self or so, a me in there, me in, is, can that person, if someone says something that they don't like, do they feel embarrassed well, about that? Who would not like it? Yeah, so if, you've seen, if someone seems to be upset by something that maybe you said, well, and then they, they get all worked happen. up about it or feel like it's... Not as far as any personal attack is concerned, because there's no one here to attack. Yeah. It's just this... So I, anybody like says, oh, well, you shouldn't talk to my friend like that. Yeah. I didn't. No, I know, I know that. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. I understand, I understand that. I understand that. <laughs> I totally understand that. I totally understand that. I was trying to make a point of, you know, people feel embarrassed and stuff about things and they, they're trying to, and sometimes you might feel under attack, but obviously you haven't no, said no, anything and you I don't, and you don't take it personally, that's no. what I mean, but oh, I just no. felt for the lady that she <laughs> thought that she was doing something that was right. There's nothing here and doing it just, just And that's, that's what's good about the meeting, really, people, 
you know, yeah. expressing themselves and saying what they feel they need to say. Oh, maybe. And then maybe they might become enlightened. Well, uh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> And then they'd be really bored with being enlightened as well. Well, I hope not too many do, because I'd be out of a job. Then. Well, actually, I already am. <laughs> I'm not. It's pretty boring. <laughs> Can you speak up? When I sit here, I'm looking at toes, almost as though something's dazzling in me. It's like light. And I know there's nobody there, but you and I is impossible, right? And I'm good looking as well. They're suffering in the folks like you. I don't take it personally. <laughs> Don't forget being me is quite tense. 
Yeah, me is, is a defensive thing. Yeah. Like, so there's quite a lot of tension that builds up in the body to maintain that, that feeling or to protect that apparent illusion. But when that collapses, then there's a huge relaxation and there's a lot of energy. Because instead of spending energy on defending yourself against the world, that all just goes and that energy then is just free to express itself in whatever way it wants. So if the 20 person wouldn't be born, he wouldn't be able to speak like you. So if 20 person wouldn't be born, he wouldn't be able to perceive the reality. But I haven't been born. I was never born. He was not born. <laughs> <laughs> She was doing things, you know, uh, and she said, well, what are you doing? He said, I'm just gazing, gazing. He said, no, I can't stop just gazing at everything. Why do anything? It's just, I'm just gazing. Yeah, and that, that happens to me yeah. quite a lot, actually. Yeah. And even though I know that it is like a contraction from me, and then gradually... Yeah, happens. but it doesn't always have to be like that. No, I don't like it when it comes to No. Well, I've got to a point now where I don't... Like it, but when he does start coming back, that's still the beloved. Yes. It's not, there isn't an enemy out there. No. There, there aren't any enemies out there. Mm. It's all just I'm one. Thank you. Tony, our one, as you described it just now, one beloved. Oneness, are they the same? Yeah, oneness, the beloved, oneness, wholeness, whatever you like. Energy, 
of energy. They're all one, but yeah. a single thing. There's just one. Okay, there's just one thing. It appears as all of this. This is, this is and, the beloved. And spheres appears. Seeking is the beloved. See, everything is this one thing. behind it that it won't stay long because it's still in the story. I am experiencing stillness. It's not the same as stillness. And, 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 yeah, the, yeah, definitely, definitely some kind of sense of being in the middle of something. Yeah, don't move, it's like... <laughs> 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 it's the same as awareness. I mean, people are taught to focus their awareness. And they, they try and they they try to do it, you know, and sometimes it seems to work and it seems quite satisfying. Yeah. But it can't last because it's in a story. It's somebody doing something, and it's tea time. Yeah.